Hello, everyone. Welcome to the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And we've got myself, Strafex John Lee. And we have... B D C. There he is. And we have... I'm the notorious one. I am Dom. Boom. All right. And we are here to discuss WCW, the Great American Bash, 1997, and what a show it was. Don, let's get on with the Great American Bash. Before we do that, shout out to Poppy Platino. Y'all probably want to know where he's at, but Poppy Platino is about to be a Poppy. So any minute. Yes, sir. So shout outs to Abel and little AJ on the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But all right, we're going to take it to 1997, the Great American Bash from Moline, Illinois. Where the hell is Moline at? Why can't it just be in Chicago? <laughs> a little south of Rockford. How about that? All right. Well, on the commentary team, we got the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, baby. We got Tony Schiavone, and we have Bobby the Brain Heenan. That's a good commentary team right there. He is overdressed, yes, Mr. Heenan. <laughs> Let's normalize ragtag. Because he's gonna say, he says it a lot. <laughs> I think Bobby was a little off. He might have had a little too much smearing off in his cup during the show. <laughs> but you know what? The fans are hot. And you know how WCW always do. They kick off with some cruiserweight action. So your first match of the night, you have Psychosis with Sonny Ono taking on the Ultimate Dragon. And Ultimate Dragon yeah. used to be in Sonny Ono's corner, but or vice versa, but uh, not anymore. We have a respect match. Yes, that is Ultimate Dragon, not to be confused with his twin, Ultimo Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was the Ultimo Dragon. That's the one that slipped at WrestleMania, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, BDC, what do you think about this opening match? You know, it, it, was a, it, was a really good, it was a really good match for me anyway. Um, you know, of course, Luchadors was always going to throw down. I think based on the rest of the card, it did not have to be the first match. But... Um, it was really good. It was really good. And, you know, for that match, you also had Mike today doing the uh, calling out moves and stuff like that. And hearing him hearing him do that, it's always a treat. It's always a plus because he 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 nails it. Um, what I will say is that Psychosis had a couple of moments where he may have forgotten <laughs> what he was supposed to do in the match. Uh, it was like... Uh, one or two times where he was a little slow on the uh, spot and it, it kind of cost him. But outside of that, it was a fairly good match to me. I agree. It definitely was a good match. The fans at this time, they loved the dragon and, you know, he mm -hmm. was doing everything. He was showboating. He did a little handstand on the, on the ring apron and man, yo, I used to love his kicks. Like how he kicked you in the leg, like three times do that spin kick. Watch yeah. out. It's Puck. But um, I enjoyed it. I always liked the cruiserweights. They they knew how to get busy. But I did like yeah. that one spot where Psychosis hit that leg drop guillotine off the, the top rope. Yeah. That, that yeah. That was dope. That was and, dope. And that was the and that was one of the times he kind of he kind of came in slow because he was like trying to dance around the um he was trying to dance around the the referee to get to the top rope so he could perform that move. And uh, yeah, had had Dragon sitting there for a while, like, uh, where are you at? <laughs> where are you at? Where are you at? <laughs> but yeah, as I said that that was a that was a great spot, despite the kind of a delay on it, and it was a good match. Yeah, Sonny Ono tried to interfere a few times, but the finish of the match, yep. we see Psychosis Irish Whip, the Dragon with the Dragon reversed it. He hits Sonny Ono. Or no, no, Sonny Ono hits him with yep, the, the spin kick. Kick the shit yep. out of him. Yep. Yeah, those those kicks were legit. <laughs> Sonny Ono could have hit a couple of those. I was just like, oh. 
they were, they were legit. Yeah, and then the dragon put psychosis in the dragon sleeper, and that was it. And that was and that was it. Yeah, John, what do you think about the match? It was a great opening match. I mean, that's that was you're right. That was a signature WCW style at the time for pay per views, and you know they should have just stuck with it. Maybe not. Maybe not listen to the criticism that why you only have the cruiserweights open the show. Can't they be in a more premier spot later on the card? Well, it's just proof in the pudding. Don't mess with the formula. <laughs> Keep the cruiserweights where they are, yes. and you know um, you throw that picture back out with psychosis on the top rope. Uh, mm-hmm. That look, that looks, uh, that could be you know the future of Cody Rhodes, the <laughs> the American Nightmare. He, that looks something uh, very American that he could wear someday against you know a golden <laughs> Seth Rollins or something like that. Um, but you know, you know, I mean, you're the way you're describing Ultimo Ultimate Dragon. I'm not really sure why the difference is there, um, but Dom, the way you're describing Ultimo Dragon, it's like you know what they you didn't think, you know, when you go back in time to WCW, like hey. Uh, you know, you know the NWO, the Kevin Nashes and Hogan's and Goldbergs, but who can say they were a big fan of, like, really a fan of Ultimo Dragon? Well, you did. <laughs> uh, and yeah, hey, yeah. we all the, re- the original belt collector. We we mm-hmm. we all remember them. You know, we all remember Psychosis and Ultimo Dragon and Sonny Ono. Um, but yeah, he was very popular, and um, yeah, a hell of a way to kick off the pay per view here. And yeah, just just a lot of fun to see. A lot of uh, trying trying to foreshadow a great show ahead, which uh, may or may not happen, but uh, still to come. It's still early <laughs> for the Great American Bash. That's right. right. So our next match, I was looking forward to this match. We have Harlem Heat with Sister Sherry taking <laughs> on the Steiner Brothers. Yes, sir. My, my God, that was a physical fight. It was a physical fight, and this yep. is your number one contendership for the tag team titles. And Scotty is looking jacked to the gills. I say that every single time we see Scott Steiner. And then BDC, I might know. I'm not sure if you heard what I said a while ago, but I did say that I said Scott Steiner and Booker T was the WCW version of Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. How they, oh, how they, how their career was parallel like how it was similar you know they start out the tag team they both broke out they both won this title that title and then they became the guy right right Some yeah that's don't agree, accurate but, but that, no that's that's I accurate that's it, that that is fairly accurate to me um and in this particular match i was uh the first thing i noticed was that scott was making his slow progression to becoming big papa pump he had on the uh, rhinestone weight belt, and he was no longer wearing the uh, the mismatched boots like his brother was. The hair was was jet slicked back, and he was growing a mustache and goatee. So it was like the the progression was on to make him big Papa Pump, um, but very much physical from the gate. Like I was just like, oh, they they look like they throwing some stiff out there. <laughs> Yo, they're still live throwing. rounds. Scott, <laughs> yes, they were. Scotty and Stevie Ray, they were throwing some live rounds. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were throwing some shots. And then, yep. like, it seemed like Stevie Ray got pissed off and hit Scotty with a big boot. But Scott, Scott was holding this shit like that. Oh, and, it, and it only got crazier from there. <laughs> it did. It did. Yep. John, what do you think about the match? What? <clears throat> up to this point so far, <laughs> I want you know I wanted to back up to uh, I had a thought that I didn't get to flesh out from the previous match, the oh. Ultimo Dragon match, which was how can we enjoyed Mike Tanay being a special uh, color commentator during certain matches because you know they were the Mexicans, the Japanese, they were not well known and they had different moves than the American style wrestlers. But we mm. all loved Iron Mike Tanay. We loved the Professor, didn't we? Mm. Yes, yes, we did. How come, how come you hate Excalibur now for doing the same thing? Anyways, I don't hate Excalibur. <laughs> People yeah, I, do. People I, do. I just wish I just wish you take that mask off. That's all. Who <laughs> <laughs> says Mike tonight didn't have a layer of makeup caked on his face? All right, but we're talking about the Steiner brothers. <laughs> <laughs> the Steiner brothers and Harlem Heat. I mean, perennial opponents 
all the time. They can always wrestle each other, and nothing you got, nothing you guys have already said is wrong. They, they, <laughs> they came to play, and yeah, you know, it's funny talking about Scott Steiner. Yeah, he was. I mean, we knew he was uh, going to turn into Big Papa Pump, and he would have a rough time with it in the beginning, in the early days of that character. You know, Hollywood Scott Steiner. Oh my God. I mean, if you could dig these up, like on the actual Nitro replays on the network, um, Hogan is like, Hogan has the new Big Papa Pump on like a Hollywood movie set. And he's like, yeah, man, this is the new guy. It's Hollywood Scott Steiner. And Scott Steiner's all meek and like, yeah, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a bad guy. <laughs> you you should really find these. It's hilarious <laughs> considering considering who Scott, Big Papa Pump came to be. You know the big mm-hmm. wild, trash talking, swearing guy. He was so meek at the time. Um, but hey, baby steps. Um, but yeah, Scott Steiner absolutely looking like a monster here. I mean, it's sad that they would have to break up the team because they were freaking awesome here. And Booker T and uh, Stevie Ray always ready to um, to uh, they always had to you know like defend themselves in in the ring against any opponent you know they were never you know, they can never look weak and but they could back it up for sure so just another hard hitting matchup and another another fun one to watch here you know I loved back in the day when the spin Rooney spin Rooney didn't have a name. <laughs> like he would just do it, and then he hit right. you with that 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 crescent kick out of nowhere. Yeah. And he did that. Yep. I think he did it to Rick Clean, and oh my god, it was just lovely. But then next, yeah, you know, when he it was, had the name after that, there was just... no playing. There was no playing it up. There was no anything. It was just he did it, and then he laid you out with that kick, and that was pretty much it. Flush. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So all right, so let's get to the finish of the match. So. Like I said, this is the number one contendership match. So whoever wins this match will go face the outsiders, Kevin Nash yep. and Scott Hall. So we get Vincent, Virgil, running oh, down man. to the ring, looking confused as ever. Scott's looking at him, and Booker's laid out on the ground, and Virgil just drops the elbow on Booker T. And then they <laughs> just qualify. <laughs> and the Steiner qualified the Steiner. Oh my god. And the Steiners proceeded to whoop his ass. <laughs> yeah. And don't forget, yeah. Vincent is head of security for the NWO. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, my we, god. we didn't get to see the follow up. I mean, unless you did watch Nitro the next night. But you can see, you know, after uh, Vincent interfered, he's doing the he's doing the black power to Harlem Heat. So I did it for I did, I did it. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that or not. But, <laughs> nah, I didn't catch it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, yeah. You know, Steve Ray just like, Booker T. Like, what the? Whatever. And then the Steve Steiner Ray brothers. looked pissed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very. <laughs> Very. Oh, my goodness. But I, I don't know why they did it, what storyline they eventually used to cover it up with. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 thought, I saw that in the background. You, you blink, you missed it. For yeah, the culture so, from Vincent. <laughs> so, uh... The NWO is picking and choosing who they want to deal with. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Because I, I believe the next pay per view after this was Bash at the Beach. Uh, I, I, yeah, I think yeah, so. it, it had to be. So yeah, they were pro- they were open, they were promoting that. Yeah, I'm hmm, not sure. Great PlayStation One graphics. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> those graphics were top notch, dude. They were top notch. They still are. But they actually, yes. you know, they, they actually have a me want to go to the beach. <laughs> Not with sharks in it. Um, <laughs> now, if they made a tank top with the Bash of the Beach logo in front and what you know, like nothing, you could have nothing on the back. That would be a hot selling tank top, in my opinion. But the best that the WWE Shop Zone has done is put the logo on the back and like a tiny one up front. I'm I like, hate that. who the hell's gonna buy that? <laughs> you know. You want to see the cool logo? You're going to have to look at my face, too. My eyes yes. are up here. Yes. We hungry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That, that shirt. Now I'll put right. your asses in the seats. That's it. Well, this match had everybody going to the bathroom. Our next one, we have Bruh. Conan 
taking on Hugh Morris. I'm like, what the hell? And so, this match, this match has some time too. So, the first thing I've noted with this match, it says, should have been the starting match. No, get it out of the fucking way. <laughs> that match was terrible. Like I was literally like, I was like, we just had two great matches. Like they were, they were technical, almost technical masterpieces. The beautiful spots here and there, and then we have bumbling, stumbling, rumbling Conan and Hugh Morris. So and basically, then, this is your, you know, usually you have a match in between, like, two hot matches. You got to, like, calm it down a little bit, like Jay Uso and Jimmy Uso at WrestleMania, which we're going to talk about <laughs> again. But, <laughs> but, but the fact that this match just went so damn long, it was ridiculous. And then when I see Hugh Morris come out, he had that ugly-ass jacket on. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. He and I think crazy. he was the fan favorite for the match. I mean, <laughs> the crowd was so dead. Who knows? I'm gonna put the yeah. storyline behind it. It's a battle of two longtime members of the Dungeon of Doom. Wait, yeah. hold on. K Dog's in the Dungeon of Doom? Yeah, he was originally in the, in the Dungeon of Doom, yeah. At, wait, hold on, hold on. You, you gotta fill me in. All right, shout yeah, out to the So after he was like the big. Uh, luchador, he had the like the singlet with the shorts. He had he was like the belt collector as well. Yeah, what he went to Dungeon Doom after that. Yeah, he became a cholo. He became the gang Mexican gangster Conan, and he was a member of the Dungeon of Doom. So this Dungeon of Doom it had Barbarian Mang Conan. Yeah, the faces of well, fear, uh, Hugh Morris. <laughs> Yeah, shark master, the giant, the shark. Wait, yeah. gi- wait, the giant was still in the. I mean, I mean, th- this time? throughout, throughout, you know, time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, talking about, he's talking about throughout the history. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I know that, but I'm talking about like who was in Conan's Dungeon of Doom. No, no. I mean, oh, in that, yeah. Like, uh, we, should, we should Google this right now. <laughs> I'll look it up right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're still in existence. They're still around. I mean, I don't know what the status of the Dungeon of Doom at this point in time was. Um, but yeah, Hugh Morris and, uh, and, uh, K-Dog and big, I think Bubba Rogers at a certain point, the shark, John Tenta, but everyone that was in the dungeon of doom left the dungeon of doom, you know? So, and the dungeon of doom has been around since like mid 1995 and they were 96 to 97. Yeah. So (laughs) we're at mid 97 now. And, uh, I mean, the dungeon of doom definitely changed from what they originally were kind of like the judgment day. There was some kind of wannabe supernatural force in the beginning, but now they're just up until, you know, everyone got hurt. They were a top faction in WWE. Um, oh, Dungeon, D- Dungeon Doom never was a top faction in, in uh, WCW, except for no. their, eight, their peak was probably that triple cage at Uncensored in 96. Man, oh, wait. Of, Faces of fear. wait, Dungeon of Doom. Was it, um, Faces of fear. wasn't Brutus Beefcake a part of that too? Yeah, yeah, he, he was, was Zodiac. He was Zodiac. Zodiac. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm they looking were, at... They were created look, to, to, to do something to Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm looking yeah. at uh, Conan's Wikipedia right now. It says, several months after losing the United States Championship, Conan became a villain villain, to, and to joined the Dungeon of Doom. However, the gimmick was already on his way out, according to Kevin Sullivan. <laughs> and Conan didn't fit the Dungeon of Doom. He was forced into it. Yeah. <laughs> I think so, what he over man. calls that rape rape. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and then he, jo- then he joined the NWO in July 14th, 1997. So literally a month later, he joined <laughs> he was, the NWO. He was, he was an NWO. <laughs> <laughs> talk, about, talk about temporary memberships. Jeez. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no. oh. oh, man. But anyways, the finish of the match, we got Hugh Morris going for the... What was his uh, moonsault? No called? laughing matter. No laughing matter. Well, he gets knocked out. Tequila sunrise. Conan with the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. There you go. You had a long unnecessary match, and you had a long unnecessary distraction. Looking up Conan's and then, membership in the Dungeon of Doom. And then, 
and then and then you had the nerve to botch the finisher on top of that before yep. you yeah yeah yep. so this is June of 1997 so we get Hell me yeah. Gene Ooh. interviewing Public Enemy oh my god that's this, I, that's this, the same thing I said I'm like wait a minute I'm like they was in there in, in 1997 I, yeah. yo. I literally saw that. I was like, I didn't realize they had left ECW so early. I was like, I what? didn't realize that they had left that early. Well, they left and a it, long time ago. It made sense because, um, well, not that they're being back in WCW, but I remember um, they were in WCW, what, 94, 95? And they had the, the opportunity. I think they had the tag titles, I want to say. Because they say they want the tag team titles. I remember back in the day, they did fight the Nasty Boys. And, yeah, yeah it was one of them street fights. They have I mean, a street I, fight I, name. I can, yeah. I can trace them back to early 1996. Um, so that's as far as I can bring them back. And like I said, at, at that time, I mean, I I liked them. I thought they were cool. You know, they came out with the tables and all that stuff. And, I mean, they were kind of corny, very corny. But uh, I thought they were cool, you know. and But seeing them cool now... Corny. Seeing him as they are right now is kind of like kind of very cringe, Johnny cringe, as it were. Um, yeah, ugh, gross. And <laughs> off. Right. I used to like that stuff. And very offbeat. Lottie dotty dotty. We like the potty. Potty. That's that's what. Uh, that's how it was right. back in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You had, you, had uh, you know. I ain't trying to bring race to it, but you had the white dudes that try to dress black and hip hop and long hair. It's like yo, 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 baby, yo, like Uncle Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't hear me going around saying yo, baby, yo, baby, yo. Too many yo's, Uncle Phil. <laughs> Break out right. seal. Well, since we're still talking about the. Bruh. Nine, our, <laughs> why did I literally watch why did I literally watch that clip five minutes before I came on this uh on this podcast? Now it's on all your algorithms. Jeffrey Break out Lucille. So when I was uh when I was making the hashtags for uh for last week's ECW one night stand show, John said Randy Dandy, that shit popped right over my fucking feed. Like, what the fuck is Randy Dandy? <laughs> Don't know. Something you said, it popped up. Randy Pee Wee Anderson. <laughs> Good job, John. Good job. Exactly. Good come in. All right. So our next match, we have Wrath. You know who Wrath is? Yes. Adam yes. Bomb. Yes. Oh, my God. Taking on the fake Sub-Zero known as Glacier. And uh, I appreciate the helmet, though, because... Uh, the helmet is what Karrion Cross is was supposed to be in a uh, WWE. Oh Jesus! Now you know we all have those moments when you know we as fans are watching wrestling and someone out. Oh my God! Someone else walks into the ring. <laughs> I mean, someone else walks into the room. Excuse me, and you're like, "This is what you watch." So this, Nita happened to watch, come in and join me on this uh, this particular matchup. So what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Why is this guy dressed like Mortal Kombat? Like, listen, it was a thing back then, okay? Um, Wait. Wait. Holy smokes! And even and I even noted the fact that this was post Mortal Kombat controversy because remember he yes. wore a Sub Zero suit when he first came into the w- yeah. into WCW. I was into it, man. I liked it. I, you know, I, this was I still it. new at the time. Yeah, but if they would have did this maybe two years beforehand, back in like '95, this would have been dope with these characters. They have Mortis outside looking like reptile. Right, Hand, handcuffed to the ring. You got Wrath yep. looking like uh, uh, like Shao Khan. Khan or whatnot. Yeah, Shao <laughs> Khan or whatnot. So. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just it's just crazy. Like it okay, it, it, yeah, and, two years before yeah. then. Okay, you're trying to go to like the realness right now. You're trying to go to that cool there. You got the guy right. using their real name. You got Kevin Nash. You got Scott Hall. It really did not fit on the show. And you know what? This is how committed Eric Bischoff is to Ninja Star Wars. He was going to sell it with these guys now. He's going to call it James Vandenberg's Star Wars. And that, that guy did not look like up. Jim Mitchell. 
good old, play the same good old character. Father James Mitchell. Fa- Father James, James Mitchell. He had hair. Yep. Well, somewhat. Yep. He looked like. Anyway, never mind. And then this yeah. episode, he and in this episode, he must have been Shang Tsung. Basically, it's pretty much all that was left. The guy that just stands around doesn't fight. This match. I didn't care about this match. I didn't care about Conan and uh, Hugh Morris. But <laughs> BDC, you want to tell the people about the about this match? It What's your note say? For, it took forever. Um, yes. So let's see. What did I note? <laughs> Mortis handcuffs to turnbuckle at the start of the match. That's going to be a clusterfuck. Uh, see where Karrion Cross got his mask from. Already noted that. <laughs> Glacier post Mortal Kombat controversy, of course. Father James Mitchell, better than James Vandenberg. Um, steady theme of dramatic slowdowns in the middle of matches because it just seemed like that match hit a point where it just slowed down for two minutes because the guy would do was just rather than just walking around the ring instead of actually doing anything. And, fin- and finally, my personal favorite is Nick Patrick allowed – for Vandenberg to get in his pants to take his key. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he what? Did. What? <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. I know oh, wrestling wow. is a I know wrestling is a work, but there was no key in that pocket. <laughs> they pretended. They're like, oh I got the key. I got the key. He's like, you don't have shit. You don't and have then, anything. And then after he gets the key Nick Patrick, instead of I don't know throwing him out or ending the match, was like, "Oh, okay," and then count and then counts to three. I'm like, "Wow, this is this is this is gonna go nowhere fast." Now, don't get me wrong, the beat down that Glacier took at the end of the match, oh, oh that yeah. was that was top notch. That yeah, was a top notch beat down. However, everything getting to that point, never. Yeah. Nah. So, so the finish of the match was Mortis, who was handcuffed. He throws a chain. That he had tucked in his pants yep. into the ring. Glacier intercepts it. He hits Wrath with it, and then I think he hit him with a spin kick. Yeah, he hit him. He hit him with his chronic kick. All yeah, of this man. was happening while Nick Patrick was getting hit, getting played with in his pants. <laughs> One, two, three, and then Glacier the beat down began. Winner. Yes. Yep. And then he's sitting there. Wait, you're sitting there like this, like. <laughs> wow, this dude get the handcuffs taken off of him and then yeah, just beat him. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Lord. All of that, all of that for his helmet that he did not get back. Oh, was it? Because he was, was, he was fighting <laughs> he was fighting for his helmet back. If you if you watch the match, um Vandenberg Mitchell had it in his arm. He was cut cradling it in his arm. So Glacier's helmet, he was fighting for that back and he didn't get the helmet back, but he got domed something serious. <laughs> Why did Glacier, the baby face, have to cheat to win? Come on now. It was handicap. It was, it was a, handicap? Look, no, it was a handicap, but you know. It was, look, sometimes yeah, he, he was outnumbered. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, he was outnumbered, and uh, yeah. What the hell is, it, cat? is it really? Is it really cheating if that cheat was supposed to go against you? Why don't you even get caught in that right monsoon? <laughs> and he didn't get caught. That's for damn sure. Man, hey, Nick Strap. Patrick is the worst referee, yes. Yeah. He is. So yeah. what happened to Glacier? Like, how is his, uh, the rest of his run at WCW? Well, his blood ran cold, and uh, you know, <laughs> he just kept going, and he would, turn yeah, he, he would morph into a Coach Buzz something or other character by the time WCW folded. Um I mean, obviously, the plans for Glacier as a top superstar never came to be. Ray Lloyd, the guy behind Glacier, not <laughs> a power plant guy, not much. A nice guy, but uh, not much of anything. And uh, he, I think he would just be a trainer on the indie scene, and he would make a tremendous appearance at uh, Joey Janelle's blood sp- um, uh, party bash, one of those pay-per-view shows many years later. It was so cool because he got to do the Glacier music and... All that shit. It was fun. Um, excuse me. Uh, Are you gonna say he was in Cody's corner? Devil, was it you, Devil you, or nothing? 
when he I, oh, was he? yeah yeah fought his brother so, or something like that i think we fought dustin maybe yeah that's but, when ddp uh, was there and all that with the glacier uh uh no action figure because if you wanted one just buy the sub-zero figure yeah um, yeah, yeah. But no, uh, I, I I still enjoy as a kid. I still enjoyed whenever he came out. I I, I did like the entrance still, knowing it was a knockoff still. Right. Um, but no, he never amounted to much, even though he was hyped extremely heavily in 1996. Yep. Did you play? Did you play with him in WCW and WWE Revenge? N64. I only had the system. <laughs> you never played no, I never, it. I I never had a six N64. Or a Super Nintendo growing up, so uh, wow. I missed That's out on a lot of stuff. You, you tell me, over? yeah. At, at people people are like, "No Mercy is the greatest wrestling game in history." Great, false. I've never played it. Never played false. it. False, false, false. <laughs> yeah, or even the WCW games at the time. You know, Revenge or uh, versus the World or whatever. Yeah. WCW me. versus the World was sweet. WC- WCW NW Revenge, that was my favorite wrestling game yeah. for the 64. Yeah. Yes, it uh WrestleMania well, and No Mercy were the same thing, but I just I don't know, but, it was just something about that WCW roster. Yeah. Did you I, I I've come to notice that wrestling games on the Nintendo 64 were really, really good, regardless of yeah. what company they came they to. Like Nintendo, something about Nintendo 64, those games were really good. Just like I was saying last week, I used to love that ECW Hardcore Revolution game because yeah. I think Ac- Acclaim made that game, and they was the same thing as Attitude. WWF Attitude and WWF yeah. Warzone. Yeah, yep. yep. You got a you got a button mash like a mother lover just to think, do a finisher. Yeah, I think at that point, I think that was when um when they had moved to THQ. Yep, and Acclaim and Acclaim. Went in and took it and took on ECW. Yep. I jumped yep. in during the first PS1 SmackDown series. So since that point, I was a SmackDown series guy up until probably 20, 2011. And, that's, See, and then it went wow. to PS3, and I wasn't at, I wasn't part of it at that time. See, I wasn't a fan of the PS1. Cause I was still on the 64. Yeah. Mm-hmm. PS2, so. though. Oh PS2, yeah, well, PS... all over that joint. Yeah. Oh yeah, when PS2, like, <clears throat> here comes yeah, the pain. I had, yeah, I had the PS2. Here comes the pain, and here all comes the stuff pain. Like that. Yep. But I wanted to play WWF or E Raw. I wanted to play, so my man Paul, he had the Xbox, so I had to, you know, go play that and see what that's like. I'm, this is sucks. I'm going back to my PS2. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the PlayStation Two, the greatest system in video games that ever lived. <laughs> is it a two or a three? Two. Two. Good lord. It's, just, uh, it's been a minute. It's been yeah, three. It's been too long. Three. Three <laughs> never got. Three never got the love that two or one. The three just never got that love because it, when it came out, it was so expensive that it just immediately turned people off. By the time people really got into it, it was already starting to be passed by. Because that was when Xbox and all those iterations were really coming strong at that point. You can stop counting after PS. Matter of fact, uh, I had the I had the Sega Dreamcast. I had the Royal Rumble. Oh yeah, I had yeah. that. Yeah, I had that the Dreamcast like Crystal Mall Arcade. <laughs> yes, that's, that's why I, that's why I got it, system, boy. Dreamcast, yo, that was one. Uh, the Dreamcast old, uh, was a special system. The old Sonic games and uh, yeah. NBA 2K with Iverson on the cover. It was a wrap. It was a wrap. You yeah, ever remember that game called The Grid? No. no. That was at the Crystal Mall Arcade also. Um, we played the shit out of that one. <laughs> yeah. I will... And then it disappeared, I... and you never heard anything about it. And then years later, of course, you know they bring all these classic arcade games back to yep. uh, festivals and conventions. And I'm like, oh, my God, there it is. It's the grid. <laughs> my, my shit was crazy taxi. That was my shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was dope. That shit was dope. I will, I will, I will shed the shame of saying that I owned a Jaguar once with the <laughs> telephone, with the telephone keypad oh, remote God. controller. 
BDC, you don't have I any it, idea. I owned it for like a month, huh? Um, I've, been, I've gone to a retro gaming convention a time or two, and they have uh, these auctions, these live auctions. You never know what's mm-hmm. going to happen because it's a live auction. You can win right. something for 20 bucks that's worth mm-hmm. two grand. This guy, for instance, he had like a, a complete Nintendo Entertainment System, complete. You know, they opened the box to show you that it was actually in there, you know, and this guy is probably like, I've held on to this for th- nearly 30 years. It's going to get Boku bucks. It did not. 75. Because no one bid on it. Because everyone who's 75. there probably already has one. I, I forget yeah. exactly, but it was not what you would expect. It's like, right. dude, I've had this for 30 years and got like... Please tell me he had <sighs> the right to first refusal. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But that, you know, but going back to the uh, Jaguar thing, I'm like, you know, if I could get that for $200, I'd buy it brand new. <laughs> like, yeah, it brand new that. Jaguar. In the box, just like the same thing, brand new Jaguar in the box. We're just gonna open it to show you that it's in there. I'm like, I might get that for two hundred dollars. Yeah, trust me, you won't have to. You won't have to go that high. I'm just saying, you won't have to go that high. Yo, you know what else I found? The Ninja Turtles sewer playset. Some guy was just selling it. I was with my (laughs) buddy. I was like, I was like, man, I've always wanted that thing, you know. And he's like, why don't you ask how much it is? I'm like, I don't want to ask. You ask for me. <laughs> so he goes, ask, I say, hey, man, how much? You know how it's always better to do something for someone else than for you to do it for yourself. He's like, hey, man, how much is that? It's like, no, oh, 300. I'm like, <laughs> keep, keep your stupid sewer set. That was a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Whole ass liar. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, oh. Great American Bash. Anyways, great American Bash. Yep. All right. Yep. Sorry. Our next match is career versus title. We have Medusa taking on oh John. I'm going to butcher the name. Akira Hokuto. Nope, you nailed it. Yeah. You cool. nailed it. With Sonny Ono. What's my dad doing up there? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's funny. I know we were talking about the match last week, and I said I'd never seen a women's championship in WCW. Well, they had one. It was clearly yeah. there. It was it's yep. pretty dope. Cause it's crazy because they got that same belt in 2K. Mickey J is watching you touch yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. And um, that's that's a nice looking title. Yeah. Like said, it's, yeah. It's, it's in 2K. I thought it was fake, but nah. It definitely mm-hmm. was real. Yeah. The um we'll say that the first thing I noticed when I looked at this match was what exactly is Akira Hokuto inhaling? She has a mask on. Fucking it's bang. got that tube, and that tube goes straight to her shoulder. What is she inhaling? Who knows? It goes to her voice box that helps her breathe. Maybe, maybe she's Bane undercover. Seriously. But um, you don't remember this comic book called Generation X? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that there's a character there. I think his name is Husk. Actually, that's incorrect. No, his name is Chamber. There's a character named Husk in there. It has the same thing like that gimmick, <laughs> an apparatus to help them breathe. But why is Akira Hokuto wearing it? No idea. Maybe she got the idea from Big Van Vader with a cool mask idea. They love masks. Yeah, China. his mask is still. I, I still see his mask is still one of the one of the tops ever to me. Yeah. That helmet is that helmet is the shit. No oh, fans are fussing about it. I would buy yeah. that. That'd be dope. Yep. So. so, so this match, career versus title. Yep. Um, we need some follow up on this one. <laughs> who was like what females was on the WWE roster? Because I feel like they didn't have nobody. Where's Miss Jackie yet? Besides, they had they had probably Nancy Sullivan or Benoit. Um, Kimberly Page and yeah, they they had and, they had the number they one had the Nitro the Girls, Girls and Liz. They had the Nitro Girls and Elizabeth. I don't think George. I don't think Gorgeous George was there yet. Deborah was there. Clearly, Deborah was there. But um, all valets. Yeah, they didn't have they didn't have much in the way of actual wrestlers, which is why half of the Nitro Girls became wrestlers. Yeah, so they so didn't just, have none. So just like the WWFE, 
they brought talent in for Medusa, Alundra Blaze to fight. Yep. And that was it. And and they had and they had a few that ran for a while. And Her, it culminated in this title versus career match. Alright. Well, this chick, Akira Hokuto, whatever whatever her name yeah. is. Yeah. She beat the hell out of Medusa <laughs> like she owed her money. She ragged all her. She was choking her out. Like, yeah. Oh my god. And, yeah, and I was and I was gonna say the cameraman the cameraman was paid extra for these shots. They were. What, what, what is Mickey J doing in that photo? What is he doing in that photo? <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Why? 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 That was literally my notes after I said she was getting ragged all that Medusa's ready to pop out. But Yeah. But yeah. But uh yeah. I, I will I will say that she when she got her knee hurt. Oh my goodness. He sold that like a mother effing champ. What? She sold it. She yeah, like she did. every time she tried to get up, it was like no matter what she did, she kept it in her mind. Oh, my left leg is hurt. She kept the in rest of the match, there was never a point where you looked at her and was like, Oh yeah, she's she's feeling it now. She's getting no. Even when she was feeling it, she was still limping hard off of that leg. Yeah. She sold that like a champ. That's funny. That's literally on my notes. She was selling her. <laughs> selling her she good. sold that knee in her S- injury seriously. like a champ. I'm like, all right. Care. I'm like, yep. okay, maybe she want to get the comeback and fire her up and get the win. Nope. Nope. She hit it with that brain buster and she won the And match. it was over. I was like, wait, what? And then after that, she started biting her in the leg. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what is going yeah, on? Yeah. Yeah. Now, I, <laughs> I have it in my notes. Mean Gene interviewed Medusa after the match, and he was a douche. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was. Yeah, he, he was like, was. he was like, Medusa, you know, I see that you're hurting all, but how do you feel? You know, you you're out of a job. I'm like, what are you doing, <laughs> like, bro? Mean Gene is a very chauvinistic guy. I, Yo, I recorded he this. Was a douche. So I forget what pay per view show it was exactly, but Sensational Sherry was going off her rocker. You know, she's going, and Mean Gene's like, Sherry, calm down. Damn it, woman, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest fucking thing ever. Damn it, calm down. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, as you lit a cigarette, I better have it somewhere out there. Oh, it's, oh man. Terrible. It's probably in the beginning when she, um, when, I think it was like the Flair and Hogan thing. It had Mr. T and Shaq there and all that. She's trying to climb through the cage and all that. I think it was that time because she was going crazy. That well, one of her moments. Yeah, I think you yeah, might be right one of her, there. one of her, <laughs> one of her less sane moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, this is one of the matches where I, I want some follow up. What the hell happened to? I know, I know. She, you know, she came back later, but. What happened to her immediately? What's her storyline? Where did she go? Did they fall up on? Did they just drop it? I you don't, don't know. know. This would oh, stump wow. me. I don't I, know. I was going to ask you well, that's my next question. So, well, you know? I mean, I I know I saw clips after the fact where she actually was on the. I think she was on the next show, um, to discuss her next steps. I don't know if it went any further than that. I will say that it did make me kind of laugh the fact that they kept doing pop-ups on her to see how she was holding up after retirement. They were checking her knee and stuff in mid to, uh, between matches. I'm like, she's retired. What do you care? <laughs> it's like, at this point, what do you care? They're like, we're checking out Medusa. Uh, her knee really looks hurt. Well, I mean, what is she going to do? She may have to have surgery while she retired. Who cares? It's like, what? <laughs> what are we doing right now? Like, right, why well. are we even bothering? Well, I'm looking at her Wikipedia right now. It says that she just took two years off and returned back in April of 1999 to be with Team Madness. That's all it says. Two-year hiatus. Mm-hmm. Okay, dokie then. Oh, all right. Well, when to retire, don't stay retired, of course. That's Maybe. professional wrestling. Maybe yes. her husband got out of the military for a couple of years, and then when he went back, she went back. She went back. I mean, she has a no- documentary on the peacock on the network and it's a very good one it's a very very nice documentary so it's mm-hmm. one of the ones you've never heard about um kind of like that one uh, adrian street 
The and, Trailblazer uh, Pat, one you're talking about? Yeah, Trailblazer and Pat Patterson has one. Um is there, you know, so it's just one of the ones they released but they didn't promote and it's on there. It's it's I like I said, it's a nice one. Um cause sometimes these superstars get these profiles and it makes you a fan of them personally and it was effective. It worked for me. I look if I saw her making a public appearance or something, it's like I'd be like, Oh yeah, fucking Medusa, Lunge Blaze, yeah, I'd love to go say hello. You know, so I'll nice. take a note, add to the interview list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I bet uh, Lunder Blaze would be a joy compared to uh, some folks on that list. Yep. <laughs> Is there a mosquito in there? <laughs> oh man! All right. So our next match is a death match between oh, no. Meng and the crippler Chris Benoit. Is which still down with the face of the fear, the dungeon of doom. Which, which immediately when I saw that it was a match between Benoit and Ming, and it was a death match, I immediately hit the side eye. Not because I didn't think it was going to be a great match, but associating anything death related to Chris Benoit, immediate side eye. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's why I was saying last week. Like, hey, I can't help if I got punchlines. It, it is what it is. He, uh... Sometimes the jokes oh, they just break Lord. themselves. Yeah, seriously. But all right, so everybody know a death match is supposed to be Immediate. violent. Yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> like violent, sure, like violent, you know, maybe yes. maybe right. use some we- use some weapons. Maybe mm-hmm. go to the bloodshed. Right. There was none some, of that. Some, no yeah, yeah. so i was confused because at some point during the match it looked like that nick patrick was getting ready to count uh who did bang out or something like that you trying to like catch his yeah. breath like they outside of the ring i'm like wait my man staying on his feet why are you counting for it look look i was confused when main grabbed the rope and he actually gave him a five count i was like wait this is a death match what, what are we doing here it's like, what are we doing here? Why, why, why are you breaking the hold because he grabbed the ropes? This is a death yeah. match, as in, we hold, we hold need to see thing. somebody choke the hell out. Oh, oh, that shit. That's basically it. But uh, yeah. So the match kicked off. They lined each other with chops and punches yeah. and Benoit yep. finally put Mang in the cripple across face, and this dude powered out like nothing. Yep. Like, oh shit, this is pretty good. And uh Yeah, I'm just confused. Like, you know, uh they had a man in the cross face and he's just trying to reach for the rope to break the hole. I'm like, wait, like no, yeah. like this and he, sinking in. And he and he did that and he did that a couple of times, but then finally, you know, it was what it was. Third time with the charm. Chris yep. Wan beat. Mang with the cross face. Mang is out cold. Yeah. Mang is out cold. And I think I think they did a really good I would the one thing I will say is they did a really good job of making them both look very Strong. worthy of a death match. Yeah. yeah. Like like Ming was straight up impo- straight Ming was straight up impossible. Chris Benoit was straight up ferocious the and tenacious the entire yeah. match. Like he never yeah. slowed down. Yep. He yeah. never slowed down. Did you hear what Bobby the Brain Heenan said? I probably missed it. He has his hands over his nose and his mouth. He probably smothered him to death. <laughs> and this is why I caught the side eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, so like I said, it was a it was a good fight. I was just like mm-hmm. th- thrown off with the stipulation. But the funniest thing, me and Gene again. Oh my God! Man just fell off the sh- off the journey, <laughs> and he turned to the. He's like, "Look over there!" And thing is laying on the ground. I was like, "What happened?" <laughs> Yo, that was just too damn funny. But yeah, I, I think I think they they aside from that crazy, they they did a really good job. Like I said, because I mean, Ming was out. Ming was out like a light. But Chris Benoit left left on a on a stretcher himself with a with a neck brace on. So it, it really looked like 
they just like battled it, battled it all out, and left it all out in the ring, which was a good thing. It, it, it really was. It, it 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 did them both favors as far as showing how tough they both are. Oh, so I had this in my notes, John. Before mm-hmm. you get you give your thoughts about this, why didn't Meng be like the head of security for the NWO? I'd rather have him. You know how badass he is. You don't need to English. talk. So what? Virgil the Benson? NWO would be untouchable if he was. Well, Ming already did the bodyguard role when he first came into WCW back in the uh, ninety-five mid nineties. Yeah, um, for why he he could just resume that role, but I don't know. He was in the tag team with uh, the Barbarian, and that was it. He was it's, the face of the it fear. is crazy how the faces of fear, two badass tag teams in the early nineties, they beating everybody up. It was believable. Next thing the NWO happens, and them dudes are getting jobbed out. Yeah, they you know, hard- they were literally the APA before the APA were the APA. Yep. Oh, man. oh. I I ha- I have a note. I have a note. Note. So there was a sign right at the beginning of the match, a very interesting sign. It was vote a very young guy by the name of Jeremy Barash. For the Marconi Award in 1997. Really? Yeah, that Jeremy Barash. Someone literally had a sign up and said, "Vote Jeremy Barash, Marconi, 20, 2007, or, or 1997." Wow. I looked it up. I actually looked it up when I saw it. I was like, "Nah, this can't be the same dude." But it was it, Jeremy Bar- Jeremy Barash, TNA's Jeremy Barash. Yeah, he actually was nominated. For this award in 1996, and they were trying to get him to win in 1997, and had that sign at a wrestling event. When at the time he wasn't involved in wrestling at all, he was What's he was called? a the Marconi Award. I see it. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, he he literally he was nominated. He was the youngest um, the youngest uh, guy to ever be nominated for that award. And I think he was nominated for Small Town Personality in 1996. Didn't win, but he was nominated. And they wanted him to get nominated again in 97. And the irony of the fact that he would later end up in the very sport that this sign showed up in several years prior to him going to TNA in 2002. Wow, that's crazy. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I, I didn't peep that. But, yeah, it's legit. It's on Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so far, what do you guys think about the show so far? So, I, I thought it was good aside from the dead weight match. Which one? Uh, Hugh Morris and Conan. <laughs> Hugh Morris and Conan. Don't worry. The next match is another dead weight match, but we're talking about <laughs> Conan and uh, and um, Hugh Morris at this point. You don't think uh, uh, Glacier and Wrath was dead weight compared to Conan and Hugh Morris? No. All right. <laughs> compared to the next match we discuss, hell no. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, our next match we have Steve Manga McMichael with Deborah McMichael. Taking on Kevin Green. So, yep. Mongo used to play for the Chicago Bears. Kevin Green used to play for the what? Carolina Panthers. And you would think Chicago, they would be hyped, or, you know, Moline, Illinois, would be hyped up for for uh, Steve McMichael. No. Not at all. No, they didn't care. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't care. I it mean,. Was, yeah. This dude, Kevin Green, he came sprinting down to the ring. and uh, He's the Logan hey, Paul of his time. Oh, my God. No, he wasn't. <laughs> hey, no way in the world. Mongo, I mean. Manga Shay. I mean, you know, we, we often joke about how. Um, we even talked about Mortal Kombat earlier in this, earlier in this episode, talking about how Glacier and Mortis were 
Rock and Mortal Kombat outfit straight mm -hmm. from the and and pretty much look like each other. Well, the seamstress involved with this match was like, eh, let's just go ahead and just take his uh, tights, turn them blue, add a little black, and add a ninety-one to them, and we'll just call it a day. I was thinking that it'd be funny if he came out with a Letterman. <laughs> That's Carolina, Carolina. <laughs> like, that said Panthers on it. it, it oh, like man. that would have been the only thing that would have made it that much funnier. So as soon as I looked, that's the first thing I noticed. I was like, "Wow, they really, they really, they really stretched to come up with his uh with his gear for this match. They really stretched hard." I guess you're right. He is no Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I was cracking up though when Mongo was trying to to uh, beat up Kevin Green in front of his mom or his, you know, I think it was yeah. his mom, I'm assuming, and the mom yeah. or whoever it was swung the purse and hit Mongo with it. Yeah, Mongo was overselling this match. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say he, you know, um, you watch Major League Two when it was like he's over the century. This guy, but it has several foul tips. Yeah. So for all the sh for all the crap that he has in this match, he does have a really nice drop kick where he kicked Kevin Green in the face. Oh, he yeah. really he has a really nice drop kick. Aside yeah, from all the other aside from all the other crap, he had a really nice drop kick. Um and Kevin Green for his part, he sold everything he took well too. I know so I was like, okay, I was like, all right, so he got the summon part down. The moves though, eh, but but then again, you're in the ring with Mongo. It's, you don't have to be you don't have to be a real technician to uh to hang with Mongo in this match. It's sad to see how these guys ended up. Yeah. Mongo going through his ALS and Kevin Green yeah. no longer here. Right. Yeah. Terrible. But the finish yeah. of the match, we see Jeff Jarrett come out with the Halliburton briefcase. It looked like he's about to go hit. Um, Kevin Green, but Kevin Green ducks and hit Mongo, and oh, he yeah, yeah he ducked, he pulled Mongo with him. Now, yeah. yeah, now the hilarity to that was Jeff Jarrett brought a Halliburton case to a match where there was a Halliburton case underneath the uh, right there in the corner, <laughs> like <laughs> like we we just we just got those hanging around these days, huh? You never That's have enough. enough. You know, wow. bank right there. Yep. But if you really think about it, this matchup, was one year in the making. Because it was one year ago, the previous year's Great American Bash, where Mongo sold out and took the money from the Four Horsemen to turn on Lean Mean Kevin Green. Um, well, yep. <laughs> I remember well. they, they had those. Uh, Macho Man was uh, the coach. And he was training both uh, Kevin Green and uh, Mongo, and like Kevin Green was snacking on the Slim Jim, but the uh, the Kippered version. You ever seen that one? Nope. No. <laughs> it's like it's like if someone took a Slim Jim, like a regular Slim Jim, chewed it up, spit it out, and then they sealed it, and then they said, "Here, it's already chewed. You can have it." Oh, I don't know if they still make that. I don't know if they still make it, but that's what Kevin Green was eating, and I bought it one time, and I was like. This is gross. <laughs> this sucks. Why would you buy that? Because Kevin <laughs> Green did it. <laughs> it was on WCW. It was on WCW, baby. Mm -mm, nope. But but this match was a one year in the making payoff. So WCW yeah. sticks to their storylines. Yeah, I mean that's about how long it took for Kevin Green to actually initiate that three point stance, or whatever it was he was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm three sitting. I'm looking at. I'm like, he's in a three point stance, and I'm looking. I'm like, okay, when is he getting out of the three point stance? I'm like, this dude's been in this for a while, and then he takes off, and Mongo's like, oh, look, I guess he's running at me, and moves out of the way. Like you could have did that ten minutes ago. Mm. Yeah, it was horrible. Yes, it was. But he had a good but, drop kick. Yeah, I give him that. Hey, for him not being a wrestler. Yeah. He was okay. Yeah, I mean, you you could tell he did. You did. You could tell he wasn't putting time into his craft, though. Yeah, <laughs> you could definitely tell that. Right, he's one of the that. greatest United States champions of all time. 
right up there with Harley Race and Carlito and Andrade. <laughs> That's cool. Did you did you say Harley Race? I sure did. There What's on is. your shirt? Well, that's Harley Race. Oh, wow. Okay. He's doing a Stone Cold gimmick. Uh-oh. Horseman style. Horseman <laughs> style, baby. Yeah. All right. Rag well, tag! Our, <laughs> our next match, the fans, they lit up when they heard the music. We have... The Outsiders of Hall and Nash with six taking on the 13-time world champion at this time, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair, and Rowdy Roddy Piper. The I-C-O-N. Yes, the Icon. You know what, man? These dudes, Sky Hall and Kevin Nash, man, they were just... Too school, too cool for school. They were just, yep. They were just, they were just having fun. So the match started off with Scott Hall and Ric Flair. Ric, uh, Scott Hall takes a toothpick, bow, looking in Flair's face. Flair, bang, punch, punch, chop, and then he do one of them little Flair struts the, the little hump in the air. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when Sky Hall threw Rick over, did like the over the rope top, the the flip he does, yeah, and, and then Nash he runs the other end. Oh my god, yeah, I lost it. <laughs> I lost it. That was clean. Yeah, my man was my man was out. <laughs> he was out. He was out like he, in the uh, Ric Flair's last match. Yeah, he that that was. I think that was done per like. That was perfect because I saw him go over and I'm just like, oh, he going to run. He going to run. Oh, he's not running no more. <laughs> he's not running no, no more. He was yeah. laid out. Yep. All right. Yeah, so like I was saying, this is for your tag titles, those mini tag titles, I, which I did not like. I mm-hmm. didn't like these titles. Because maybe the the guy's paws were just too big for these titles. I used to like the old WCW 90s titles, which was dope, but. Yeah, well, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think I think WCW had a had a problem at the time where they they had the big gold, and they wanted to emphasize the big gold so much that they shrunk all the remaining titles that were there. The United States was a decent title, decent size. Yeah, they like it. To me, it, it it just seemed like when I looked at those tag when I looked at the tag team titles, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. those are especially. Tiny. But I mean, but I mean, especially the way Scott Hall was holding it, it was like, okay, yeah, um, it it it, it looks small in comparison. But then again, Scott uh, Hall ain't a small guy neither, so that could be a part of it too. But um, yeah, but compared to Big Gold, the rest of the titles were small. Yeah, the TV title. Yeah, the rest of the show. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're right. But and, it's uh, crazy. Um, at this time, seeing Ric Flair and Roddy Piper teaming up. You know, yeah, as his, many wars as they had against each other, right? Yeah. Everybody and this. so my my one note that I have is Flair didn't want it, Flair didn't want that work anymore. You six as an excuse. <laughs> oh man! I was like, Why isn't he coming back? <laughs> yeah, like, he not coming back. He ain't no coming back. <laughs> he was out. Yeah, Piper had to do everything this, this whole match. It was it was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Flair didn't want that smoke. I don't know that. Now I'm punched by Scott Hall. Well, all I could think about was the Survivor Series 1992, where two of those guys were tag team partners, pal. Mm-hmm. So Ric Flair is going crazy cutting this promo on like Superstars or Survivor Series. He's like, blah, 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 blah. Then he's like, isn't that right, Razor? <laughs> hey, man. You know, and then Razor has to do yeah. this promo. It's like, that's just how they did promos in that time. It's like, isn't that right, big man? And then, then to tell him, Hawk, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so corny. That's, that was the style, baby. 
That was a style. Yes, it was, baby. This is not right, Dom. Yes, it was, baby. Well, Ric Flair, he got into it with um, six Sean Waltman because he keep interfering, and then he punched him, and Sean Waltman sold the hell out that punch. It kind of reminded me of WrestleMania 31 when Sean Waltman sold that punch from Hulk Hogan, too, in the aisle way. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> he went I'll be, flying. I'll be inducted with you in a couple of years, brother. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so Flair leaves his partner. And now you got Roddy Piper and you got the Outsiders. And Piper, he has heart. Everybody knows that. This man, mm-hmm. like you literally have to kill him to to, to get ahead. And, and they sure did try. Yeah, they tried. But look at this. Scott was drunk. Had him in the sleeper. Almost had him. Hmm. <laughs> but, uh. The finish of the match, we see Scott Hall with the Outsider's Edge. Yep. One, one, two, three. Hall and Nash are still your tag team champions. I it's enjoyed it because it, 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 it picked things up. Like, the crowd was, was hyped for this match right here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, before we get into the main event, BBC's headline said... It was the World Heavyweight Championship. Why was it not defended? Yes. Or was Hogan? Hogan liked to take periodic time off. What's he on I mean, Thunder he... in Paradise again? Nah, I think that shit was canceled by then. Like um, <laughs> but, you know, Hogan would do that from time to time, and some of it would be political maneuvering. Some of it would be he only had a certain amount of pay-per-views he had to do every year. Um, so he decided to take certain ones off, but it felt... You know, and we're talking. You know, there's talk about this on uh, the new Vice series, "Who Really Killed WCW." Um, but the only one that mattered that Hogan was not on was sold out '98 with headline by Ric Flair and Bret Hart. Did a surprisingly good pay per view buy rate number without the Hulkster on the show. Um, this pay per view, the Great American Bash '97, is kind of weird, right? It's like, hey, this is this is Macho Man's pay per view. Let him get the right. full pay per view paycheck. But it was, I mean, we did have those two or three duds earlier in the card. Um, but this show, up until the NWO came out, it was severely lacked. Yeah. That certain star power. Where the hell's the giant Luger? Where the, <laughs> Where's Sting? Know, where are those guys? Sting is still not wrestling, but, you know, uh, there's some severe lack of star power on this show. Did Goldberg exist at this time? Goldberg was not a thing yet, no. Okay, not. okay. So, uh, what about... Uh, well, the world uh, was calling for Sting during the pay-per-view, but he never showed up. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, all that combined together helped you know make DDP a bigger superstar, actually. Yeah. I mean, it was main evented by DDP and Macho Man, and DDP was still an unproven draw at the time, but Macho Man, of course, is a legendary performer. So here's his chance. Uh, to be on the main stage, and what a main event it was. Yes, yes. So your main event, we have, you know it's a big fight when you have Michael Buffer out there. Well. (laughs) I just, (laughs) on on, on my own, on my own time, yes, I watched wrestling on my own time. I I was watching a Clash of the Champions from 1993, and there's Michael Buffer announcing the for the television championship, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. So there what? you go. I'm assuming that was the main, main event, event time. Oh, there you go. It is the master of the Paul Driver, Mr. Wonderful. Question. Paul Orndorff. Question strap. So I was looking through uh, the Great American Bash on Peacock. How come there's no 93 and 94? Do you know? They just didn't, they just didn't have one then. They had uh, a different pay-per-view called Beach Blast to to before there was Bash of the Beach. So mm-hmm. you know, pay-per-views were not monthly at the time. You know, they were as they were. Um, so they had Beach Blast or Capital Carnage at the time yeah, so to take over those shows. 
So they stopped. So they had what the bash of 89, 90, yeah. 91. They just stopped at 92, 93, or 93. Yeah, 94. It was that Jim Hurt era that Ric Flair loves. It's kind of like, you know, if you look, try to look up the 2005 one night stand, and it's not under the WWE one night stand. You're going to have to go to the ECW tab ECW. for that one. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. No thanks, Peacock, for messing up all of season five of SummerSlam. Which year is that? I don't know. It's not a fucking season, Peacock. You know what I did today? I was curious after uh, I was looking up Chris Benoit. I said, let me go see if they got the anniversary show, the, the tribute show, after he did what he did. No. They I took mean, it off. They got it's the best of of the of the year. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's. I was just curious. I was just curious. Let me see. And, sure. Yeah, oh, they 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 have a they have a tendency to just you know. Shoot. Karate chop well, people out of history. Well, maybe I should go look and see if they still got when Vince tried to kill himself in the limo. Yeah, that's just a storyline. Damn, sure Paul it's, London. Sure, it's still there. Damn it, Cherry, calm down. <laughs> All right, back to Michael Buffer. So, <laughs> this is a no disqualification, lights out match. Strap, you want to tell people what the lights out match mean? Um, you know, AEW is a very common uh, perpetrator of the lights out format uh, of late. Um, but no, yeah, they made a big, huge deal out of this. So it was pretty cool. You know, just it's allegedly, I mean, lights out matches, according to all elite wrestling, is it's that it's non sanctioned and it's not part of the show officially. Anything goes. Anything goes. So, and it did. So, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So we got. We got the Macho Man Randy Savage coming out. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Then after this, we have Diamond Dallas Page coming out with his wife, Kimberly. But Macho Man was looking at the beauty when the beast came from the the crowd and took up Macho Man. That's what Bobby Heenan said. He took him from behind. Yes. Question for y'all. Yeah, I watched. Kimberly or Miss Elizabeth? Miss Elizabeth all day. I mean, like she right dead. now. She did. But anyways. <laughs> Back then? Uh, Back then, uh, yeah, Miss Elizabeth all day. Back then, Miss Elizabeth. She was high and classy. Yeah. yeah. She, ain't, she ain't show nothing. For the wandering mind. Kimberly did, so... Yes. Thanks for the show. 40 year old virgin. (laughs) Great movie. It was. That's what she said. But, uh, yeah, so DDP comes out of nowhere. He attacks Macho Man, and then they get into it, man. This is like a real fight. They take it into the crowd. Mm hmm. Where the hell did DDP get that damn crutch from? No idea, but I know where it ended up. Yeah, he hit him in the stomach. He hit him in the back. It was crazy. Macho Man really portraying that madness gimmick because he took out like damn near every single referee in the WCW roster. He he caught Mickey J with the power driver fade. That (laughs) yo, he ripped my man's shirt. He power driven. Power driver, yeah. Oh my goodness! Mickey J caught that fade, and then it referee, was... referee, uh, Mark Curtis, he came in. He's trying to trying to stop him. He got thrown he, over the top. He he mushed him, and yeah, he threw him out. Nick Patrick came and well, Nick? <clears throat> Nick Patrick saved Kimberly from getting punched. Yes. Yep. Yep. And then. After that, I think he got punched before Macho Man went after the cameraman. Macho took Macho. the man's glasses off <laughs> through the camera. Oh, my God. Macho yeah, Macho went, went off. <laughs> Macho went off. Yeah, that madness is real. The fans are chanting, we want Sting, we want Sting. No, we didn't get Sting. No, no show. Sting. 
No or sting. He didn't tan. Nope. But, uh, he was, my he was... goodness. DDP finally got the diamond cutter on Macho Man, but the referee's out. Scott Hall comes out. Then he just mm-hmm. stomps on the back of the referee's head. <laughs> I'm like, yo. Yeah. I'm like, yo, these referees got payday uh, this night because everybody took a beating. That's crazy. Yeah. That everybody caught an L that night. Everybody caught an L that night. Everybody Seriously. caught an L. Seriously. But <clears throat> this was entertaining. Like, everybody's on their feet watching this match. And I was hyped. Like, I never seen this match until I just watched it. And I enjoyed this. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. I thought DDP uh, won this match because they said this is uh, their second match. What was their first match? Do you know? Was it just like a regular match? I don't recall, but just like you, Dom, I was very sur- I was surprised at the finish. I was like, I thought he won this one. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I was like, oh my god! I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> Yo, he, yeah, uh... yeah, oh. <laughs> yep. Scott Hall with the outsider's edge, Macho Man. He kicked the with referee the in the back of the head. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he goes for the elbow. One, two, and three, then... and Macho Man is your winner. Yep. And, and, and Scott Hall, after after punting dude in the back of the head, pulls him over and like, now do your job. <laughs> he did. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> Just from seeing the finish of this match, and I enjoyed this match, I want to see what happened the next night on Nitro. Yeah, well, and... Well, Dom, you, you say that every every time we review a show. You're like, that's got me interested. So, well, well that's if good. It's real, if it was real good, then yeah. Yeah. I'm curious. That's the point. They yeah. Probably, they pro- Savage and uh, Paige probably not even there. They probably taped. <laughs> that's but, what that's what the WWF used to do when it was still one hour. Like, you'd be, say, you know, in your house September 95, and you'd tune in to Raw the next night to say, ooh, what are the, they going to talk about the pay-per-view? They wouldn't mention a single thing <laughs> just so you would have to buy the pay-per-view on Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna tune in. I'm gonna look after we stop recording. I'm definitely gonna look and see what happened and get disappointed. Yeah, the the hilarity of the fact that uh, in in the in the era that we're in now, where after a pay per view you get like a a running catalog of everything that happened that night. Um, and even when you have like shows where you get like an extra like two minutes of footage after the match is over, it was like. He was penned. They didn't even give you replays of the of, of the finish, and then it was the end. And you, I was like, I was like, uh, what? <laughs> I was yeah, like, where? Where's the rest of it? It it was hilarious. Like I forgot, the, I forgot. I forgot. That's how it used to be. Yep. Yep. Gave you the stills back in the day. Yep. Oh, for forty nine nine nine, you can see what happened. Oh God. And, and of course, me and Gene talking about the wrestler that was having problems with his organization was going to show up the next night on Nitro. You know who it is? I don't remember that shit. Oh, so I definitely got to tune in and follow up. <laughs> Scott Putsky. Scott Dunlap. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. All right, but did you guys enjoy this show, Great American Bash, nineteen ninety seven? I actually, yeah, I actually did. I did enjoy the show. Um, I did enjoy the show. The, um, despite me talking about matches that should have been should have been starters, yeah, they they floated out well. Just when you got overly engaged, they gave you a chance to go catch a, catch something to eat or go get some go to the bathroom or something like that, and then get reengaged. So they did do that, and then they were they were really good to make sure you were able to get last call for the last for the main event. So I mean they 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 did they did flow it well because we we all knew what nobody what nobody there to see Mongo or uh, Odin or Hugh Morris or uh, Kevin. Well, some people were there for Kevin Green. His mama, his mama, and his daddy, and his brother and them were there for for, for Kevin Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but um. Yeah, I think they 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 did do a really good job of of filling the slots, especially with nine matches, nine matches, but didn't really feel like it was a fifty hour main of pay, uh, pay per view. 
Yeah. So that's actually a good thing. And especially with some of the guys they didn't use for that for that pay per view. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. John, what you think? Um yeah, it's it's a mixed bag of a pay per view, but overall I would say I had a good time with it. I enjoyed watching it. Um definitely <laughs> Judging but purely by the main event uh, finish, hey, I thought I knew the show and I didn't. So um, <laughs> there are things there are things you can pick up on it. Um, in the grand scheme of things, uh, you, I mean, you have to watch it just for the DDP and Savage Two match. Um, yeah, the, that uh, match was something. The Outsiders versus uh, Flair and Piper is also worth checking out. Um, if uh, you want a third match, that uh, Steiner Brothers and Harlem Heat and fourth. Would be Ultima Dragon and uh, Psychosis, and skip the rest. But if you just want to watch those four matches, you're gonna have a really good time. So, uh, the show yeah. does matter. It definitely matters. Yeah, I, yeah I, I definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't skip Benoit Ming, um, if for no other reason. Like I said, it, it really, it really was a master class in making both of your both of the occupants look incredibly and insanely strong in the match. Um but yeah I'd skip the rest of them in a heartbeat. <laughs> so make that five matches yeah. you should check out on this show. Yeah. Check it out. It's it's, it's mm-hmm. worth seeing. Yeah. Skip uh skip uh Hugh Morris skip Glacier. You definitely skip Hugh Morris. Definitely skip Conan. Um, by Where's God, it? I, yeah. if you're, if you're, if you're even thinking about watching Mongo, just, just, just go sit down and have a drink or 15, um, <laughs> you know, like Medusa is Medusa, but she, she, she got waylaid on. So I don't know yeah. if, if you're a Medusa fan, you really want to watch that, watch her catch that smoke. Um, but yeah, yeah. This show matters. Yes, it does. Check it, check it out. But next week is our final show of June. It definitely matters. And we got the infamous Hell in a Cell. We're going to King of the Ring 1998. The Undertaker versus Mankind. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and your main event is a first blood match for the WWF Championship. You have Kane taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah, that take that take a mankind match. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. all I got to say is yeah, yeah, yeah. And your and your final for the King of the Ring, you have Ken Shamrock taking on The Rock. It's going to be interesting. Next week's going to be interesting. Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to close out the month of June. Yes, sir. We should we should do a watch along to the Hell in a Cell match. No, I'll already be doing that when I go meet Mick Foley in Saugus, Massachusetts, when he go, heads to the Kowloon restaurant. And I will be in attendance. Nita will be in attendance. And this is where he's going to discuss his pay per view match with The Undertaker. And as big of a fan of Mick Foley as I am, it's going to be one hell of a night. When is that again? Uh, I believe it's a Wednesday, June 18th or 19th. It's Juneteenth. Oh, Juneteenth. Uh-oh, at least yeah. you got a day off. Bang, bang. <laughs> so, yeah, it's Juneteenth, <laughs> Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday, June 19th at the Kowloon Restaurant in beautiful, safe, and bright Saugus, Massachusetts. Next week. Uh, the Kowloon, if you never knew, was uh, the place all the pro wrestlers go to after a show at the Garden. That's what makes it so famous. I have been there one time before, and it was wonderful. He's going to say, there's always that one fan who always asks me, did it hurt? Well, what do you think? He said that every time I see yeah. him so far. But like, my, I would not ask you if it hurt. I would ask, how long did it take for your teeth to be re- taken out of your lip? I would say, what bonus did Vince McMahon give you for that? Because he had to give you some. He's like, I did it for free. <laughs> yeah. 
And he likely had he likely did too. That's the crazy part. He <laughs> lo- he loved wrestling. He loved wrestling and making a name for himself that much. He probably did do it for free. Seriously. Oh my goodness. How long which was is, your TNA Which is why on? Yeah, which is why everyone loves Mick. Literally the epitome of giving his body for a cause. That dude did it time in, time out, over and over again. Now look at him. Holy foley. Holy foley. Looking at her. <laughs> he got oh, 18 man. different personalities, and they're all famous. That's it. That's it. Well, it's about that time. Johnny will close this up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the It Doesn't Matter podcast with our special guest, BDC. Good luck to our friend, Poppy Platino. He'll be back very soon. We have the notorious one, Dom, and we have myself, the notorious, also, StrapFX. We will see you next time. Oh.